today is, what is today? Today's the 28th of September. 28th. Uh, my time is a little bit off. I'm up here in, in um, Juliet, Tennessee. Mount, Mount, Mount Juliet, Juliet, Tennessee. Uh, near Nashville with uh, many of you know Ben. Banjo Ben Clark. He's been to the church a few times. And... Uh, Daniel. Daniel. Yes, sir. <laughs> Daniel works with Ben, and so it's good to be up here. And I asked them if they would share with me this morning on the daily devotion, and they were more than more than happy to do that. And so, several things I want to make you aware of. Just prayer requests. I talked to Jimmy Casilla last night, and he's there at uh, Grady with his dad. And it seems like it's they're just not going to be able to operate. And so, be praying for Jimmy. Um, it's just a matter of time, I think, is what the doctors had communicated to him last night. And so, Jimmy, we're praying for you and praying for your dad. And um, I just really appreciated your testimony last night to me that you don't know what you would do without God in your life. And um, it's times like this that we really realize that. Continue to pray for Vanessa as she's going through her chemo treatment. Uh, the Petresca family, um, as uh, uh, Constantine is recovering from the bone marrow transfusion. Just be praying for the family. Uh, there's some needs there, and I think we've posted those and made them available. So if you can share in that, that would be great. Now, this morning, we're going to pick up in John chapter 7, but we wanted to start out with uh, the old hymn, Blessed Assurance, and Jesus is mine. And so it is an assurance to know that Jesus is ours. And the remarkable thing is, if we really know where we were before Jesus saved us, that we were just absolutely, totally depraved. Not even capable of trusting Him, but that God drew us and created us as a new image in Christ. And so that's a great thing. And it is an assurance that will carry us through for all of eternity. So guys, let's... Uh, One, two. This is my story. This 
I, my Savior, am happy and blessed. Uh, watching and waiting, yeah, looking above. passage this morning, and it, and it kind of relates to what's preceded it and around it. Um, you remember Jesus is there at the Feast of Tabernacles, and he had told his brothers he wasn't going up, and then he went up later, and then he begins to preach in the temple area. And they were, the Jews were upset, they were seeking to take him, but his time had not yet come. And the question that came to my mind this morning is, why did Jesus come? And we know a lot of answers to that. And I don't want to put anybody on the spot. And somebody said, might say he came. Well, he came to do his father's will, he said. Okay. That's, I, that's what I want to hit on. I, I thought about that this morning. So many times we can't say he came to destroy the works of the devil, which is true. He came to die for uh, lost sinners, for salvation. That's true. But the bottom line, he came in submission to the will of the Father. Mm-hmm. And that really struck me this morning. Um, a lot of times we go out and we think we have purpose, but really our main purpose is to be submissive to the Father, mm -hmm. to do His will. And um, So let me read the passage, and we're going to make some comments. I think um, some of the people of Jerusalem therefore said, it is, not the man, is this not the man whom we seek to kill? And here he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ? But we know where this man comes from, and when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed, as he taught in the temple, You know me, and you know where I come from, but I have not come on my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. In verse 30, So they were seeking to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. Yet many of the people believed in him, and they said, When the Christ appears, will he do more signs than this man? Hmm. Any thoughts or ideas on that passage, Ben, that struck you? I, I, what I'm seeing initially is this um, clash between what the world wants these people to believe and what they know to be true spiritually yeah, yeah. and that, that's where they're torn right yeah yeah they're like gosh is the christ going to do more than this but don't they know that this is the guy and mm -hmm. why aren't the chief priests behind him you know and, wow. and to me it, it's just um a reminder that we're not called to go with the most popular opinions mm -hmm. even from authorities at times you know yeah yeah, yeah. um that we're called to seek after what truth is, regardless of how many people are running after a certain mm -hmm. thing. And that makes me think of what Jesus said, I think, in verse 7, where he said, um, let me find it, we looked at this yesterday, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me. Mm -hmm. um, and we see this clash, like we talked about. Daniel, as you've thought about the passage, any things that... Yeah, I, I love how 
how God kind of shut their eyes because it wasn't his time. And we see that unfold throughout the rest of the gospel um, when it's not his time to go and the Lord's will will be done. And uh, I've always hung to that part of yeah. this. And we, we can spiritualize that a little bit and, mm-hmm. and use the old saying, you know, God's time is always on time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That in the well, like, you're, like you're seeing, you know, the son's mission was to do the father's will. And we're here to do the Father's will. Mm-hmm. And man's interference in that is nothing. You know, mm-hmm. the Old Testament says that God looks at the plans of man and, and he laughs. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that should give us real confidence as believers. Because as we're doing the Father's will, he has his plan for our lives. There's nothing down here that can overthrow that. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter how powerful, like here, how powerful a government or a where the chief priests were, they couldn't, yeah. you know, not one millisecond could they shift the perfect plan mm. of Christ going to the cross. Wow. And here's the good news. God hasn't lost that sovereignty over the last 2,000 Amen. years. Amen. Right? Amen. He's not now trying to juggle yeah. too much. Yeah. He's, he's just as in control now. So as believers, we just have this confidence that man will not stand. Mm. Satan will not stand against God's yeah. perfect plan. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the number of verses that come to mind when I think about that, you know, Paul said, in the fullness of time, God sent his son. Mm-hmm. When the time had been filled, according to his will and his purposes. Mm-hmm. And Barry, you said there's nothing that can thwart God's plan. I, I kind of take the opposite of that, too, in that sometimes we think we can help God out with his plan mm-hmm. and his timing if we elect the right person, mm-hmm. you know, those kinds of things. And the church, the evangelical world, is especially guilty of that, I think, oftentimes, that, that we think God has called us to, to bring about his bidding. He's going to use us. Sure. However, we can't determine what those things are. Yeah. And uh, so it makes me think in the interim, regardless, we need to be about the Father's will. Well, yeah. So what do I bring out of this as far as a directive for me? Seek truth. Yeah. Trust in the Father's plan. That's good. You know? So That's good. It's like, as long as I'm seeking truth, even if the right person doesn't get elected, yeah. I mean, I'm, I just, I taught on Mark chapter 14 last week when Jesus is arrested and all his disciples fled. Yeah. yeah. And you know what they're saying? They're saying, oh no, our leader has oh. not been, <laughs> our, oh, wow. you know, the world's out of control. That's good. That's you know, good. Jesus, and that's why they fled. Like, yeah. it's like sheep, they fled. That's what Zechariah says. Right. And, uh, when what was actually happening was God's perfect plan to save them was being put into place. Mm, mm. And uh, man, we can trust him. Because this place is falling apart. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. My, you know, gosh, we could go forever on that, but my, you know, I feel like the, my foundations in this country are being shaken. Yeah. And that's yeah. heartbreaking to me. It's scary. Right, right. But at the same time. At the same time. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. These guys couldn't get Jesus because it wasn't his time. Yeah, yeah. We have the same God. That's right. Wow, wow. Dan, you have any? I, I think that's a mirror to to our lives. Um, and you can look at it even as in life and death itself for us, mm-hmm. and um, going on into eternal life so when it's not our time. When the Father's when the Father has a plan for us, it doesn't matter what men can do. Wow. They can't get in the way of that. And I think that's mirrored through this that. We see that same love that he had for his son. He has, mm. he has for us. He yeah. has that love for us. So. When you really, when you understand that, there's no place for fear. That's right. No. Yeah. But fear, that fear yeah. is gone if yeah. his plan is being carried out and he has the best plan. Mm. Mm. We, of course, we're still afraid, but we don't have reason to be. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there's, there's one other quick last thing that kind of struck me, and I. I would like to like to ask questions of Scripture, and you know, when the crowd is saying, "Could this be? Is this really the Christ?" And maybe the officials haven't, you know, maybe they really know it's the Christ. And I wonder if if that's not part of the drawing of the Father, mm-hmm. um, where He begins to open our eyes. I, I know in my personal life, mm-hmm. it was kind of like all of a sudden re-looking at Jesus, if I can use that phrase, because I grew up in church, and y'all know my mm-hmm. testimony. But then there was that point in time where all of a sudden, mm-hmm. and it's not like I sought after him. It's like, like I was trying to find God, as people say. Um, I didn't find anything. I'm too boneheaded to find anything. <laughs> um, but all of a sudden, God's, you know, we see this with the woman at the well. As, as Robert was teaching last Sunday, 
um, that progression where we see the Father drawing. And I, I just wonder, I like to imagine yeah. that maybe there were those in the crowd that... Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. They were eventually part of the hundreds at, yeah. his, after his resurrection. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And so we never know how God's working. And I, I guess I'll conclude with this, the same kind of way I exhort us every morning is that we, we don't know who the Father is drawing. But we know He is. There's no question about that. I can't, I can't debate that. I can't argue. He is drawing. And, you know, we just want to be available as vessels um, as we walk in relationship with Him. As Ben said, that we seek truth and seek His will that God use us. And so this morning we'll, we'll ask the Lord like we do every day, God, make me sensitive to what you are doing in another person's life that I can sow a seed of the gospel in their life. And if I identify and recognize that a seed's been sown there, God, give me the wisdom to know how to cultivate that seed. Mm -hmm. um, and if by your grace, God, you'd allow me to witness you save somebody today, um, man, that would, that would make our day. And so... I just encourage you to, to walk with him, trust him today. Whatever it is you're dealing with in life, God um, God is not dethroned, and uh, he won't be. And so we just yield to him and trust him. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you, that he keep you. Um, ben and Daniel, thanks for sharing mm -hmm. with me this morning. And if time allows this week, we, we might be able to do this together another morning, but I'll be with you tomorrow morning for sure. Lord bless you and keep you. Have a great day. I love